Okay, so if you're looking at this picture, you might be able to tell that this is a computer. You might not. You might be able to tell that this is a motherboard and GPU of a 2007 Dell Studio 520, and that this is a one gigabyte stick of DDR1 RAM. What am I even talking about right now, and why is it important? Well, I might sound like I know a lot about computers, but in reality, I know pretty much next to nothing. What I do know is how to look up videos on YouTube of how to do things. So after watching a few tutorials, I ordered the necessary parts on Amazon and decided I would make a tutorial of my own. The parts arrived, I got to documenting. Here we go. The motherboard, the central nervous system. The graphics card, these are the eyes of the system. Processor, this is more or less the brain. Power supply is pretty self-explanatory. And a hard drive, which is kind of like long-term memory. Oh, I forgot to mention random access memory, or RAM, which is basically the short-term memory of the system. I also forgot to mention this weird analogy I'm using for the human body, but I'll go into more depth later. The only thing we're missing right now is a place to put all these parts together. I'm reusing the old 2007 Dell case, and the only thing we need to worry about is this power button cable right here. The power supply is the first thing we can put in the case. It screws right in. Just make sure that the plug and the power switch are facing the back of the computer. We won't need all these cables that are coming out of the power supply, but we'll need a few. This is the processor, and we're going to put this in the motherboard before we put it in the case. This is the CPU bracket on the motherboard, and you just lift this little lever right here. Then you gently drop the processor into the socket, it should fit right into place and then you put the lever back down, just like that. Now the CPU cooler comes with the CPU. Uh, it's this hunk of metal with a fan on it, and it basically just screws right in on top of the CPU, and you plug it in on the motherboard right there. It says CPU fan, boom. This 24 pin socket should be right next to the CPU cooler and RAM, and that is what this 24 pin power supply cable will plug into to power the motherboard. I was too afraid to put the motherboard in with one hand while recording, so this is actually reversed footage of me pulling it out, but you basically just put it in and line it up with the screw holes on the bottom of the case. Now the RAM sticks fit into the motherboard slots located between the CPU cooler and the 24 pin cable, and RAM basically dictates how many processes and applications can be handled running on the computer at once. Now there's two inputs you need to worry about on the bottom of the motherboard, which is this white front panel, as well as the L-shaped SATA plugs. The L-shaped SATA plugs are for the hard drive. In my case, I have two hard drives, one SSD and one HDD. An SSD or solid state drive is basically just a type of hard drive that is much faster than an HDD or hard drive disk. This is the power button cable I mentioned before and it plugs right into the white front panel socket. Also don't forget to plug in this 8 pin connector right above the CPU. Now it's time for the graphics card and this is quite the upgrade. A graphics card is a chip that is cooled by a heatsink and a fan, just like the central processor. The CPU connects directly to the monitor and handles all outgoing display. To insert the graphics card, just make sure this little bracket is pushed down, line it up, and it should click into place. Now it's not necessary, but it's generally good practice to secure the graphics card by this metal panel right here. This way a heavy graphics card will stay in place. Now there's one more 8-pin connector that may or may not need to be plugged into your graphics card. It all depends on what particular graphics card you have. And now we can plug our monitor into the HDMI port right on the graphics card. Now simply plug the power cord in, press the on button, and cross your fingers that the system powers on.